Okay, I am standing here on the western side of the Devil's Den, down in the lower point of the triangular field. Um, triangular field is part of the Devil's Den, and it's actually one of the more visited spots, strangely enough, on the Gettysburg battlefield. Um, and it's more for the paranormal or the, the ghost activity that has claimed to have been in this part, rather than the history, which I think is sad. Um, and I think, you know, to come here and say, oh, I see this and I see that, without even knowing what happened here, having a full knowledge, um, is, is, you know, pushing history back and, you know, a hobby first. Um, because it's what happened here uh, on July 2nd, and one sp specific action that we're going to talk about, and that is the charge of the 124th New York Infantry, otherwise known as the Orange Blossoms, which in the far distance there you can see their monument. Um, the 124th was at top of the Devil's Den. Um, there were, the 4th New York Battery's guns were up there silent, and the Texans of Hood's, we're coming back this way through that thicket there. Um, there was a man named Major James Cromwell who was in the 124th New York and thought that a, a charge ought to be made down the slope of this hill uh, right into the Texans. And he, he begged several times for this to happen, and finally the order was given to do that um, at the protest of some of his men. Um, they, they, they charged down this hill with cannon roaring at them and rifles and shots and shells and whizzing, hissing bullets um, to the dismay of people around them. They had, per they had no protection um, on either one of their flanks, and yet they, ma they make this charge down this hill um, and were pretty much uh, almost annihilated. Um, when they did retire back up the hill, there, there weren't many of them left to rally at the top of the ridge again. Um, and of course, in this area was the first Texas right through here. To the right over here was the 44th Alabama. Um, and then to the right of the 44th Alabama would have been the 48th. Alabama, and in support, as we just talked about in the last part, in the support behind them was the Bennings, Georgia Brigade. So again, you can see this wave of attack with these Alabama and Texas soldiers pushing their way up this hill, pushing the charge of the 124th New York Volunteers back uphill, pushing, and that's the amazing thing that happened here, pushing these men, not only pushing them back, but pushing them uphill and back. Um, and then, of course, with the support of Benning's brigade behind them, they were able to take the Devil's Den. Um, so thus, the reason for the terrible fighting, Hood himself uh, was wounded in the arm and pretty much lost the, the use of his arm for the rest of his life because of that. Um, and again, this is very rocky, very hard sloping ground, strange croppings of rocks all over. Um, but that's what makes, I think, the paranormal, you know, the death studies of this particular field so interesting is because something very, very, very terrible did happen here. Um, there, was, there was a lot of death and destruction in these very fields that we stand now. Um, and, of course, you know... Um, People come here today and feel that the spirits of those men still linger on the battlefield, um, whether that's to uh, uh, be proven or not, you know, uh, is debatable and it's a matter of one's own opinion. Um, for myself personally, um, I like the history aspect of Devil's Den, and I believe that this spot here that we're standing is one of the more interesting spots with the charge of the 124th New York. This has been uh, our continued of uh, continued tour of Devil's Den, specifically here in the triangular field with the 
charged down the slopes of the triangular field by the 124th New York the Orange Blossom soldiers against the Alabamans and Texans on July 2nd, 1863. The 4th New York Battery and the Gettysburg Devil's Den Witness Tree here in Devil's Den for part eight. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this tree here. This tree is one of uh, the original witness trees that witnessed the battle. Amazingly, it survived the battle itself and then 150 years later still stands here today. Um, this battery here of guns is the 4th New York Battery, which at the time of the assault of Hood in the distance there, um, this battery supported the 4th Maine, whose monument sits just down the hill. You can see just the spire of the obelisk there. Um, but this battery was in support of the 4th Maine Infantry, and they were on the extreme left of the 3rd Corps line. Um, during the action here of the Texans and Bennings, uh, uh, these guns uh, were captured by Confederates. Um, their last position was to the right and rear until about 6 p.m. But these guns were actually captured here during the attack of Hood on the second day of 1863. Um, one little note nearby here is a rock carving of, uh, and it says P. Noel. It's really well done, and it, and it stands for Park Noel, um, who who was actually by trade a rock carver. And he may have had something to do with the 4th New York Batteries, either monument or the base. Um, so, of course, he, as you've seen in the, uh, the New York Monument on Culp's Hill, um, sometimes guys that worked for companies who placed these monuments came here and carved their names in the rock along with the locals. Um, we're standing pretty much at the top of Devil's Den now, the highest spot here on Devil's Den. And uh, this is where the battle shifted. This is where the Confederates finally were able to push and capture the den um, before having to retire here, not being able to, to capture Little Round Top. They, they would actually make their way over here into the slaughter pen um, and then make that attack against the 20th Main in that direction here. Um, and of course, a couple attempts up the slopes of Little Round Top, but were not able to take that high ground. Um, the 99th Pennsylvania fought very, very hard in this in this uh, protection of Devil's Den. And just on the other side, of course, was the orange, orange blossoms from the 124th New York, um, which we talked about in the charge down triangular field. Um, in a nutshell, the Confederate uh, infantry's attack on July 2nd um, from Seminary Ridge struck the left of Dan Sickles' line. Um, for about two hours, um, uh, one Union brigade in this area and two batteries of artillery took the full blunt of the battle. Um, of course, with the, the survivors of this falling back in that direction to Cemetery Ridge. This has been part eight of our tour of Devil's Den, looking at the 4th New York Battery in support of the 4th Main Infantry, the 99th Pennsylvania, and the Gettysburg Witness Tree, and the Park Noel rock carving over here on the rock. Nine of our Devil's Den tour, continuing the tour. And we're sitting on the south, or we're standing here on the south side of Devil's Den. There's a small wooden footbridge here. And we're going to talk about a few little carving markings here. Um, the rock that I'm standing on, and let me move off it so I can get it in the photograph. There's your bridge. And just to the right, if you walk over here, this rock here that overhangs the parking lot is the Tipton Rock. It's also the local trash can. But um, probably uh, uncle of William Tipton was John Tipton. 
and you can see where he inscribed his name in the rock here. There's actually several rock carvings on this rock. One of them is over here, um, and it can be hard to see some days, but it's actually raining today, and you can see it right there. It says WH. So there's the initials WH there, and then over here is another one that says J F something R. That's a little hard to see. I'm going to have to take a picture and then and then go through it. Um, but there's a rock carving here, and then you see all these little rough spots here. Um, there's another one. There's another one. And there's another one. And what those rough spots actually are, are the work of government chiselers. Um, in 1894, by, by 1894 rather, I'd say, um, the whole area of Devil's Den was just nothing but graffiti. And there's a famous picture, and I'll post it later, of, a, of, of Maurice Fox. Um, who was an earlier visitor to Devil's Den, and he wrote his name huge on the rock. Of course, graffiti births other graffiti, and before you know it, the whole area of Devil's Den was nothing but filled with graffiti, and then in order to stop it, the government chiseled a lot of the graffiti away um, to try to stop the graffiti from happening. Now, of course it doesn't. People still come here today and you know, with chalk or crowns or even paint sometimes and, and um, desecrate the rocks. But the government made an attempt in 1894 to chisel away. And here's one that's been chiseled that still has a date. It looks like it says 1871. Um, and probably what that means is a lot of the rock carvings that do exist in Devil's Den um, in the immediate area of Devil's Den were probably done after the government chiseling of 1894. Um, or if they were, if they did predate that chiseling, they were in positions where it could not be seen or weren't even known about, such as the David Forney carving on top of the elephant rock there that you see in the distance. Or behind that in the distance further, the flag rock. Um, those were rocks that were more difficult to climb that or you know nobody suspected anybody would go up there and and carve so that they were missed by the government chiselers this has been uh the tipton rock here on the south side of devil's den part eight of our devil's den tour of the gettysburg battlefield devil's den is such a fascinating area and there's so much more to see that i'm not able to explain there's so much more of the battle aspect that I'm not able to do in just nine videos. So I'm going to leave this open and fluid for uh, future editions. Um, but I'm going to end here at the Table Rock, which is probably the most famous rock and you know the most uh, intimidating rock here in Devil's Den. Um, and of course, it's you know it was it was one of the spot probably the most photographed rock and spot for people to pose and take pictures. And as we walk underneath the table rock, and a lot of people like to get their picture taken under this rock with their hands on it like they're holding it up. Um, as This is one of the spots where a lot of the government chiseling happened. I mean, it's all over the rock um, in an effort to stop the graffiti um, in 1894. And, of course, you know, it didn't work because, as you can see, people come here today and you know, write or paint their name on the rock. Of course, the paint will will eventually erode away, and, you know, it's, it's not a national monument. It just kind of makes it look a little ugly in the beginning. It's kind of... It's kind of a, uh, a strange coincidence, though, because it's neat to see a lot of these old carvings. And they almost become part of the battle. They become part of the battlefield, even though they may have nothing to do with it. So in one sense, you want to see a carving here and there. And then in another sense is you don't want to see it over graffitied. So my own personal opinion is that some is okay, <coughs> but not overkill. Um, again, this is the table rock. And, uh, and, it, and it's just this huge boulder that... 
you know, somehow with the creation of this, uh, this outcropping of rocks, you know, just this huge boulder ended up resting on top, you know, through this seismic and volcanic activity that happened here 200 million years ago. Um, again, this is uh, my final video for today on Devil's Den. We've pretty much walked around the entire den. I've pointed out some key spots, but, you know, again, didn't go into extreme detail. Um, I'm going to do some more videos. And if there's anybody out there that has uh, any request as far as the Devil Den area, things that you would like to see or things that you've seen online that you want me to do some more further investigation, please send them in and I'll be more than glad to come back here uh, when it's convenient for me and do that.